Hi guys, Brexiteers in government seem to not understand Brexit and issues connected to it like international trade. Now, some seek out knowledge on such issues, but unfortunately, those recommending policies to them usually have ulterior motives to providing sound advice. It's interesting to look at those working behind the scenes and what they're whispering into the ears of people like Boris Johnson, Michael Gove and Dominic Raab. The Legatum Institute is just another free market think tank floating around the edges of Westminster, it seems. It and others have been described as the Brexit brain. Normally, right-wing think tanks that quote-unquote advise government ministers on how to deal with issues like Brexit. Funded by a Dubai-based New Zealand-born billionaire, as well as around 40 mostly anonymous donors and based in the plush Mayfair offices, Legatum has the ear of large sections of both the British media and the government. A man called Shankar Singham, who is the chairman of Legatum's self-described Special Trade Commission, wrote that the British could maximise benefits and minimise the disruption of Brexit by leaving the EU as soon as possible and removing tariffs. He said this back in 2017. Also in 2017, the think tank suggested it could solve the Irish border issue using drones. It also suggested the UK government should consider giving a prize for technological solutions to incentivize the development of innovative solutions. This is probably where Jacob Rees-Mogg and Bernard Jenkin got their electronic border on the island of Ireland idea. Mr. Singham also works for the IEA, another right-wing think tank, that seems to be advising directly Boris Johnson's government, or at least some senior Brexiteers in government, the think tanks advice they are parroting, both in Parliament and in the media. But let's hear from Mr. Singham on how Brexit is currently going. Leaving the EU, reportedly known in Westminster as the Brexiteer's brain, is Shankar Singham. He's a lawyer specialising in international trade and a fellow of the pro-Brexit think tank, the Institute of Economic Affairs. He sat on the British government's Trade and Agriculture Commission. I asked him how he thinks Brexit's gone so far. So I think overall it's going pretty much as expected. Notice that he says things are going as expected. This is to shore up his position as an advisor. No doubt he told the government and the media beforehand that things would go smoothly. These people are not interested in sound advice, just maintaining their position. Which is to say there are issues for traders who weren't necessarily prepared. Sorry to interrupt again, but you can see here he's blaming companies, not the government, for the lack of preparation. Think for a moment how, bi how many businesses had to be prepared between Christmas Eve and New Year. For what was coming. But those issues, I think, are being resolved. There are obviously going to be challenges, particularly on the regulatory side. We've had things, for example, like the um, Class B mollusks. Now, of course, he's complaining about regulations. His think tank was pushing the idea that, and has been pushing the idea, that loosening regulations and doing away with some of them is the best approach ban that the Europeans imposed. That's what happens when you're a third country under an FTA. We have heard a lot of frustration and anger from people whose businesses have fundamentally stopped. So, for instance, as you mentioned, mussels, uh, seed potatoes as well have also been hit. And particularly in the case of mussels, they say that was foreseeable. Can you understand why they're so cross? Yeah, I totally agree with the anger, but I think the anger is misdirected. You know, the anger should be directed at the European Union. The anger should be directed at the European Union. So blaming the EU for the problems faced here. The UK was part of the rulemaking process. There was an attempt by Brexiteers to blame the EU for so-called uh, new rules. Although these rules have existed for more than seven years before Brexit itself took place. Because it's the European Union that have implemented this regulation that is not based on science, is directly an attack on the UK. But hang on a minute, because they will, the people who involved in this trade will say, hang on a minute, third countries, which is what we are now, were never able to export unpurified mollusks. So therefore, we shouldn't be surprised. And we were badly advised by DEFRA 
No, that's actually not true. So, in fact, there's a legislative record of discussions about precisely this issue. And what happened here is the EU deliberately moved in a different direction. Which Notice that he never actually presents any evidence to support this. And this is very interesting because another person who continues to do this is George Eustace. George Eustace hasn't shown any alleged communication between the EU and the UK that would have, you know, resolved this problem pretty quickly. George Eustace has said on numerous occasions, the EU told us we could do this, but he hasn't actually presented any evidence of that. And of course, this man isn't doing either. Of course, you know, once you're a third country, you can't control the EU's regulatory system. Uh, However, we do have a trade agreement with the EU, and that trade agreement does require equivalence negotiations in in the area of SPS. It does require custom simplifications to be agreed between the parties. And if the EU is, is violating those, frankly, the UK needs to react. And has the EU been violating them? No, it hasn't. These are the people advising Boris Johnson, Michael Gove and Dominic Raab. These people are charlatans and they have continued to push the idea that Brexit will be a good idea. We've heard how they have used in the past issues such as the border in Northern Ireland can be fixed electronically. And this has filtered down to ridiculous rhetoric in the House of Commons and in the media by the likes of Jacob Rees-Mogg. It's becoming clearer and clearer that the people who are pushing Brexit on them in the mainstream, the Brexiteers, have no understanding of how these things operate. And they're relying on think tanks who have an ulterior motive um, for advice. And this is the consequence of all of this. Let me know in the comments section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee, so why not check it out?